to another episode of Indie Authors. Tonight is Indie Authors number 58, and we are talking with romance novelist Samantha Chase. Samantha, thank you very much for being with us tonight. Thank you for inviting me. This is exciting. It's exciting for me, too, because you might be in a stretch of putting out more books than any author that I know. And, and in just the last year and a half, you've gone from basically having one title out to, to seven plus and and they're continuing to come out and your readership is growing um, that's got to be exciting for you absolutely this is like a this is a, a lifelong dream coming true finally <laughs> <laughs> well that's awesome I want to we want to talk all about it because I think a lot of romance especially romance uh, genre novelists can learn a lot from you but but actually authors in general can can learn a lot from you and so um, we're gonna we're gonna discuss this in detail why don't you take us back to November of 2012 and talk about your first um, your first novel when when it first came out and how that went all right actually if you talk about Jordan's return that was 2011 I think oh excuse me of yes. course 2011. Exactly, I, 2011. I released my first novel, Jordan's Return, and I had decided to self-publish because I had submitted it and been rejected 16 times. And I was feeling a little discouraged, but it was a, the book of my heart, and I really wanted to see it in print, and I discovered Create Space and figured, well, I might as well try and self-publish. And if nothing else, I've got a copy for myself in my hand, you know, and see my name in print. And I self-published and I, you know, went and did everything that I thought I was supposed to and I thought once you put a book out there that it sold itself. <laughs> and, and nothing could and be further from the I truth. I to learn that, you know, you have to actually market it a little bit. You have to get your name out there. Just because you put a book out doesn't mean that anybody's going to buy it beyond your family and friends. Right. I want to go to your Amazon page, okay. um, and I'm going to make this just a little bit larger. This is uh, Samantha Chase's Amazon page, and if you scroll down, let's see, here's Jordan's Return. And our audience should notice that this book came out in November of 2011, as you said. Now, it was nearly, basically a year later that The Christmas Cottage came out. No, That's correct. There was no title in between Jordan's Return and Christmas Cottage? No, there's nothing in between. Okay, tell us about the release of, uh, of your second novel. The Christmas Cottage was, a, was something that I was writing for National Novel Writing Month, or NaNoWriMo, and my plan was that I was going to release it as a free book, as a way of keeping my name out there, until I was able to write something serious again. And so I wrote it like in two weeks and did it through Create Space and designed the cover and did the whole nine yards. And then I realized Amazon wasn't going to let me do it for free. I couldn't put it out there for free. So I figured I'll put it out there for 99 cents and we'll see what happens. And it sold 10,000 copies <laughs> in, like, in like the first six weeks. That's insane. Now, first of all, most people can't write a book in two weeks, let alone write a book that's going to sell that many copies and, and people be okay with the editing and all of that stuff. So, so tell us how you were able to accomplish that. Um, people were not pleased with my editing and <laughs> because I rushed to put it out there just thinking that... Um, I didn't take the time to edit it. You know, when you write your own work and you read it over and over after a while you stop seeing the errors because okay. you know in your head what you want it to say. So I put it out there and I got a couple of really scathing reviews about it. People were very angry about the, the editing and so I did a quick revision. It did the, the kind of errors that only you know that I thought I caught them all but I'm sure that I didn't. And uh, you know, just just went with it. It just I was promoting it on Facebook and Twitter and that sort of thing, and just friends and word of mouth. But I think the timing of it—it it was a Christmas book at Christmas time at ninety-nine cents. Romance readers love that kind of stuff. 
Okay. Okay. So there were there was success and there was lessons learned all in the same in the Absolutely. same bundle there. And and the main lesson learned was was maybe don't rush to publish uh, until you've made sure that it's edited. However, because it was a Christmas book and it was already uh, basically a month away from Christmas, it still probably worked out fine even with those few scathing reviews. Exactly. Although that's that's heartbreaking, uh, you know, seeing those the first that first scathing review that that was painful. You know what? You're not a great author until you have some one-star reviews because right. even if your book is perfect, somebody's going to come in and say, well, I, I heard this book was perfect and it's not perfect and here's why right. I'm giving it a one-star review. Exactly. So. And and actually, that that's funny that you say that because I did. I went to some of my favorite big-name authors and just read through some of their reviews and I said, okay, they've got them too, so I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, and, and they they didn't comment on them at Amazon either. They just let it go like water <laughs> off a duck's back. Exactly. So it was, uh, it was definitely a lesson learned. And I found that even when you think you've caught it all and you've had people proof, you know, it's, it's always, there's always going to be somebody who catches something. Right. And it's okay. Okay, let's let's go back to to Amazon because I want to demonstrate something that's happening here. Um, after the Christmas Cottage came out, lots and lots of sales. You obviously realized I need more books. I need to keep doing this. And so, what's the next title that came out? After the Christmas Cottage is Ever After, and I think that it's at the top of the page. Okay, this this is Ever After. Yes. Okay. And, and that was sort of a book that wasn't. Planned, but it's the continuation of the Christmas Cottage, and, ev and the main character in Ever After, she was the best friend in the Christmas Cottage, and everybody wanted to know Ava's story. That was the biggest request that I got from readers was, when are you writing Ava's story? So I figured, all right, I'll write Ava's story. And, okay. you know, six weeks later, you know, there was Ever After. Okay, so ever after, actually, and then trust in me. Actually, I'm sorry. It looks like wait for me came out for before me came. ever after, but they yeah, both came out in May. Two books came out in the same month. Um, where are we see in May for trust? Did trust in me come out? Did I really put trust in me out in May? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so wait for me came out, then then ever after came out, then trust in me came out in June, and then catering to the no nope, catering to the CEO, CEO was in March. March. We forgot that one. We then, forgot that one. So Eye of the storm. I think I think the point my point has been made here basically <laughs> is that it it looks like this is this is a formula that's working is just keep writing books get books out there keep writing books and that's a formula that's working for you it is I feel like if I if I keep putting you know books out there people are gonna remember my name if I wait too long in between books there's so many books flooding the market these days it's easy to forget you know somebody who wrote something six eight months ago for right now, I want to build an audience. You know, I want to get my name out there. I want people to, to start remembering who I am. And if they like my stories, if they'll start recommending them to their friends. And that's been working so far. You know, it really, it really has. And I'm pleasantly, pleasantly surprised. <laughs> yeah, and it's good to see that this approach can work because my sense is that your number one... Um, you know, element of success is just to keep writing, keep putting books out there. You know, it's true that you are on social media and it's true that you have um, a website or a blog, but, but you're not super active with that in terms of, you know, promotion, promotion, marketing. You're more along the lines of writing. It, it's sort of like you're doing a NaNoWriMo every single month. It is, and I, I, that's the, it's like the thrill of the chase, you know, just trying to get it out there and, uh, you know, I, I had a train of thought going there for a minute, but, um, you know, I don't spend a lot on marketing and promotion. I know people that spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars a month on their marketing, and I, I don't do that because I think because I'm, I'm a little bit nervous. I don't, I, I think you and I talked the other day, there's no formula that 
works for every author. Like, so somebody can use a certain website for their advertising, and if it works for them, it doesn't mean it's going to work for somebody else. You know, and so I've not I've not been brave enough to spend the big dollars on some of the advertising. So I'm just I'm going on just keep throwing myself out there, you know, and and writing, and the ninety nine cent price tag helps. Okay, let's talk about that. What what is your approach to pricing? Um, I have tried pricing my books higher, and they don't sell very fast. Um, I was okay with the ninety nine cents for the Christmas Cottage and Forever After. And when I put out catering to the CEO, I originally, I originally put that out there at two ninety nine because I felt confident. Like, okay, I've had all these sales, I should be able to start upping my price and people who know me they're gonna they're gonna spend it and they didn't and so then I lowered it to 199 and sales picked up a little bit but not great and when I dropped it to 99 cents it exploded I mean it was it was mind-boggling you know just at the time selling a thousand copies of one one book in a month was was huge for me That's so huge for anybody it really is I, I think now, and I know for myself, as, a, as I have my Kindle and I have the Nook, and when I see a 99 cent book, I'm probably going to buy it. <laughs> you know, if it grabs my attention, I'll grab that before I'll spend the uh, the 2.99 or 3.99 on a book. So for now, I I don't mind pricing it at 99 cents. It doesn't cost me anything to publish an ebook. You know, and yeah. so I feel like if that gets my fans more people to to see my work, I'm okay with that. Okay, now we've been talking about basically writing a book a month, putting a book out there a month. Okay, so it's priced low. That's a lot easier said than done. <laughs> um, a lot of authors, myself included, would love to be able to write a book a month. What are some of your tips for getting writing done? You have to write when you have the time and when, you, when, the, when the inspiration hits don't wait because when I when I have a thought going in my mind when there's a scene going in my mind I have to jump on it I have to whether I'm jotting it down just notes on it on a paper if I'm not near my computer or you know I just do whatever I can to, to get it going and when I when I finally can get the time to sit down I make sure that I get I that I'm productive I find that when I tell myself, okay, on, on Tuesday night I'm going to sit down and write, my mind is a blank. But if I just wait for the inspiration to come, I make myself sit. My husband and my son, they're, they're like, you still at the computer? And it's like, yeah, the inspiration's here, I'm writing, it's all going on in my head, I won't be able to sleep until it's out. So it's just go with it. When the inspiration is there, take advantage of it. Your family will understand. You know, I'm fortunate. My son is it's older, so they're a little more self-sufficient. I don't have little ones running around. But just when the inspiration's there, don't bother me because I'm sitting down and writing. <laughs> okay, okay. Now, you mentioned earlier that, that maybe when your first book came out and your second book even came out that, that you hadn't done as much editing as you would have hoped. What's your approach to editing now? I am a lot more cautious about it. I still haven't utilized an editing service, which I'm starting to look into. Um, I, I have a, a group of beta readers who are, who are friends, who are, I have one that's a college professor, I have another who's, who's going to school for journalism, and they've been kind enough to help me. Now, with In the Eye of the Storm, that had actually been picked up by a by an agent, a literary agency in New York. They were going to try and sell that for me, and they edited it for me. And when I put that book out, I still had people contact me and say, "You know, I found errors in there." <laughs> so I can't win. <laughs> I cannot win. But I'm I'm more aware of it now. You know, okay. and I. And I think that's important. But I still see in, in traditional publishing, I find errors in the book. So I try not to beat myself out too much okay. about it. All right. I also I want to share uh, I want to share some covers with our audience. Uh, I'm assuming that you can see this cover forever after. Yes. 
I, I'm really impressed with your covers. I, I think that they they do everything they're supposed to do. Tell us uh, about your approach to um, to cover design. I am very blessed. Um, Christy with Gilded Heart Design, she is just fabulous. And I found her through, through a Google search. And she just really opened my eyes to, to what could be done. I She asked me if there were any authors that I liked, that I liked their covers. And um, Bella Andre is a is a romance author whose work I love and whose covers I liked, and I told Christy about that, and she just went with it with me. Like she has a questionnaire that I fill out, and I base I give her basic descriptions of my characters, and she asks me about where my books are set. You know, do I want just people or do I want scenery? And we work together on it, and she's just she's fabulous. I. I kind of do feel like, you know, the cover is important. I noticed that uh, kissing is is a big theme <laughs> on romance <laughs> covers. It's not just kissing; it's also the the one inch away from kissing. Yeah, that's right. That's a big. That's a big seller. Why why does romance just get read so much? I mean, romance is is by far the best selling genre. Why do you suppose that is? Who doesn't like a happily ever after? Yeah. You know, I mean, that to me, I want to read something that I'm going to feel good at the end of, that like, yay, look, they overcame, and everybody's happy. You know, I, I, I think that really it's, an, it's a good escape, and it's, and it's an escape that leaves you feeling good at the end of it. I also want to share... I could talk all night on this subject. I also want to share a, a YouTube video trailer that you made with Animoto. Now, for our audience who is watching this, they don't know that I've got the sound turned off because it's just not going to go over our voices very well. But this is a really nice book trailer, and and you made this with a company called Animoto. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that process. I actually, they were another. A lucky find with, through a Google search um, because I wanted to make a book trailer back when I was doing the after the Christmas Cottage came out. I wanted to experiment with it, and they were one of the few sites that offered the free service. You supply the pictures, and you pick, you choose the words that you want to put, and the free service you get a thirty-second video, and everything, almost everything you need is right there on the site. You know, you can upload the the pictures. But they have music clips and all that that you can use, and I realized, even though I was so proud of myself with my thirty-second clip, um, I noticed other authors were making much longer clips, and so I upgraded to their first level or their mid-level of uh, of paid uh, subscriptions and was able to do this. And I I buy the clip art from a, from a website that does uh, royalty-free. Pictures. I think it's RTF one two three is the one that I used for this one, and it's just a whole lot of fun. I mean, really, anybody could do it because, as you know, Jason, from talking to me, I am not tech savvy, and I was able to yeah. do this. <laughs> well, for a low cost video trailer, this is the best one I've ever seen. And, oh, and you're sweet. <laughs> well, and I've I've actually seen a lot. Um, you talked about not being super active with. Um, with social media, but you do have uh, a fan club page on Facebook. It's uh, I do. Samantha Chase Fan Club, and interaction with your readers is important to you. Um, Absolutely. Tell us a little bit more about that. Um, a couple of years ago, I started working with um, with a mainstream romance uh, writer. Her name is Susan Mallory, and I was one of her. She did a promotion where she picked like twenty five super fans to be her cheerleaders. And our job was to promote her books. And I really loved that she was interacting with us. I thought that that was pretty exciting. Like, here's this famous author, and she's emailing me, and she's she's mailing me stuff. She sent me a Christmas card, you know, like all the stuff. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and so now, having the Facebook page, and now that I'm starting to actually build a fan base, again, beyond my family and friends, and when people right on the page, I write back to them and I'm finding now that they're they're getting pretty vocal about, oh, I shared your book or I shared the link, I posted it on my page and I think that if you 
build a relationship with them a little bit. They, they see you as, a, as somebody who's nice. They're going to want to read what you're doing next. They want to, you know, it's almost like they want you to succeed as much as you want to succeed. Okay. I want to also, we're getting a little low on time, unfortunately, but I want to share your website. Uh, this is chasing-romance.com. Mm -hmm. And obviously there is a contact link here, so this, this is a good place uh, to contact you. Otherwise, you're on Twitter, um, at Samantha Chase 3. Um, Who knew that Samantha Chase was such a popular name, but I had to, I had to be the third one. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And so I'm assuming that either the website here or the um, Samantha Chase 3 on Twitter or uh, Samantha Chase Fan Club at Facebook are the best ways to get in touch with you? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm on I'm on Facebook probably more than anything. Um, probably more than I should be. <laughs> uh, that's that's where I've been interacting the most with people. Oh, I'm so sorry that I had to hurry through this tonight because I wanted to get twenty good minutes uh, in talking with you, but honestly this subject is one that we could discuss for hours because romance is the most popular genre. Um, not only for readers but for writers and you've oh, got yeah. so many valuable tips that a lot of our audience uh, could learn from. Is there is there anything I've forgotten to ask that maybe you wanted to share with, uh, with uh, other writers out there? I would just say really don't be afraid to, to take the leap. I know that for a while uh, self-publishing was a little bit frowned upon and I know even when I published Jordan's Return I had an aunt who, who made the comment, she goes, well, it's not a real book. And I just felt like that kind of deflated me a little bit, but why isn't it a real book? Yeah, and now, after The Christmas Cottage sold so well, all of a sudden it was a real book. You know? Yeah. And uh, I just think that, that really, if that's your dream and you want to get your work out there, do it. There is, don't wait till you think that it's the perfect time because the perfect time never comes and you never know that time right now, that could be your perfect time. Okay, so the advice is do it. Do it. It's, it's make sure you have good editing, whether it's great beta readers or whether you hire out, get a great cover, and then yes. do it again, and then do it again, again if possible. Heck yeah. And you know what? Interact with your fellow indie authors because, you know, sometimes we're the only support each other can get. Yeah, it's a great community. Absolutely. Okay, Samantha Chase, check out her books on Amazon or at, uh, or at her website. Thank you so much for being with us, Samantha. I've learned a lot, and I hope to incorporate what you're doing into what I'm doing. Thank you so much for having me. This was great. Okay, good night, everybody. Good night.